And here in the studio with us, Chris Swift. Swift Trading. Good morning, John. Good to have you here. Did you have a good Christmas? I did indeed. And yourself? Good. Very good. good. Now good. we're ready for a brand new year. What do you think of this market here today where we had a little bit higher overnight trade, but boy, we softened here in the day trade. Yeah, you know, we were talking out in the hall about the Trans-Pacific Partnership and how that will relieve some of the tariffs off of uh, some other countries for for their crops, making them probably a little bit more competitive uh, to U.S. crops. But um, there's nothing really going to transpire much today. Most of the market's closed a half day today, and then people will be ready to go back to work on Wednesday. So this this weakness here mm -hmm. could some of this be contributing because of the uh, attributed to I guess I should say the the light and the thin, thin volume that we have oh most definitely yeah there's not much volume going on out there in the markets right now and I don't anticipate there to be there you know until we start getting into uh, Wednesday to Wednesday Thursday right. um, but uh, the grain markets are soft they've been soft and they've uh, until this tariff issue is really relinquished then more likely than not they're going to remain soft and we've got another issue out there, and that is this partial government shutdown. Yes, yes. And what that could mean for the WASDE report, the yes. West Blind Demand Estimates in January. Exactly. Your thoughts? Well, we'll all be flying blind until we see those reports coming out, but uh, there won't be a great deal of change, I don't think, just because of the time of the year that it is, and we've not seen any huge export sales out there, so I don't think it will change dramatically on there, but we'll all be anxious to see, you know, we don't want to get far away on our data. If there is no report, does that does do they traditionally then just push this back to February? Does the trade become nervous and trade uh, that blindage that you were referring to all the way through to February? Uh, I'm not real sure sure that it would be that crucial to it. Um, the biggest issues right now that we have is the South American crop because it's in the ground and growing and all looks to be really good aspects from that crop. So I'm not real sure that the old crop issues are going to have that much to, to do with pricing right now. And for the soybeans specifically, South America is going to be what we pay the most attention to. Planning decisions, though, are going to be starting to be made here oh, you know, after the first we'll of the year. All. What are you hearing from producers? Um, you know, a, a little bit of a swap to corn um, because of the bean issue with the tariffs and everything. Everything. But uh, I know that farmer rotation now is so critical that they really can't vary a great deal from what they have the rotation already set. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll uh, figure out what's going on over here in the livestock yeah, trade as well. Be sure and stay with us. We'll be back with more in just a moment here on the Market Day Report. All right, we'll continue on here. We'll go over the livestock trade. Let's first start in the live cattle complex. It's kind of mixed with the front months going higher. The deferred contracts a little bit weaker. February live cattle up 23, 124.40. April up 15 at 126.55. June up 8 at 117.03. Feeder cattle market, it's all lower now with the exception of March. January down a nickel at 149.03. March steady at 146.88. April down five at 147.15. And Chris Swift is here with Swift Trading to talk about all this. All right, first of all, this cattle market, mm -hmm. technically, fundamentally, what do you think? Uh, demand driven still, very much demand driven. If you look at the scale of the prices, we've got the December going off the board here at noon. It, it was a little over 125 when I left. February is going to catch right up to it, 60 under at 124.40. So the demand of it is really good. We're going to pull some weight off of these cattle probably because of the snowstorms out in the Kansas and Nebraska area. Um, I don't know how devastating that will be, but it's sure going to make for some sloppy pen conditions for a while. Plus, more cold weather on the way. Yes. What about weights up to this point? Because we know that this cold weather could keep weights in check for a little bit. Yeah, we've not seen any gain. Um, you know, seasonally, this is the time of year we start to back up anyway. But we've seen no real significant decreases. This is the first winter weather that we've had. Um, so I haven't seen any kind of detrimental to the weights yet. But this will probably peel some, some pounds off of them. What are your thoughts then when we did this convergence with the December contract here with the cash and now we've got the February where mm -hmm. it's at? Feel pretty good on it? Yeah, that's pretty friendly. Um, I'm not real sure how long it's really all going to last. Um, our demand situation is very touchy right now with the government shutdown, with some of the political venues, with the tariffs. So I can see the consumer maybe wanting to contract just a little bit on some of the spending that they, has been, that they have been doing. That might balance out a little bit of the, the lower weights that we have or even better uh, demand out there. That d demand may soften just a little bit. Is that why we're seeing the deferred so we I, I think so. I think in the back end, and, and right now the weather is a big factor to the feeder cattle because nobody wants to place feeder cattle in a big old muddy pen. So Right. Yeah. Point.
the hog complex. How healthy is that? Um, it looks pretty good. It has been hugging these lows, and, and all last week it was lower, and it's still kind of hugging down at the bottom end of, uh, of the summer range that we had. Um, I still like the hogs from the aspect that we know that China's going to probably need pork from now on. How we get it to them through the tariff issue is going to be the question. Well, let's look at the uh, pork futures here uh, right now and find out where we are trading. We've got the February up 60 at 61.25, April up 58 at 66. 708, but the May is down 13, the June is down 18, the July is down 10. Here we go with the deferred, but look at that spread, almost, uh, what is that, a $20 spread? Oh, yeah, there. yeah, premium between, all the way up. Exactly. And from the last Hogs and Pigs report, another 2% on all uh, categories that we saw on that. So that's, again, that's very good demand that, that you're seeing that we're price structured in there for our higher trade uh, going for the start of uh, 2019. Where does that leave cash, though? Um, you know, I don't know. That Pork cutout needs to find a bottom here pretty soon. It, it's been beat up for probably the last six, seven weeks in a row. So everybody would like to see that pork cutout firm up a little bit. Is that because now we've gotten past the Christmas ham season, or is yes, there something more a, to Well, it's it's been going down. So I think it is just an abundance of pork. And um, you know, we watched the Mexican peso go up just a little bit here. So maybe the strength in that will bring Mexico into a little bit more pork, and that keeps us from having to be so reliant on China. All right, Chris, always good to talk Absolutely. to you. Thank you very much. Happy you New too, Year thank to you. We look forward to having another 2019 here with us. I'm looking forward to it as well. All right, thank you very much. Yes, Chris Swift with Swift Trading here to talk to us about the markets today. All right.